evening, Theo Trade. This is Corey Rosenblum, and you're watching the Theo Nightly video for March 21st, 2019. And we're going to pull the perspective up to the biggest frame we can look at, at least easily, and that's the monthly chart with a couple of jumps into the weekly chart of key stocks, key markets, and key ETFs. Why? Because today surprised traders with an upside break in the market, with the Dow being up almost 200 points, and the other indices being up either 1.25 or close to about 2% in the NASDAQ or just above one in the Russell. And that is a breakthrough of resistance and it can help to pull the perspective up on our charts just even on a price basis to see where prices come from and where it might be going or maybe specifically what we might be missing on those intraday five minute, one minute, 15 minute or even my favorite time frame for swing trades, which is the daily chart. First, Let's just take a look at the S&P 500 on a monthly basis. It's the chart on the left. We always have the hourly chart on the right just to see what's recently happening. On the bigger picture, this is, believe it or not, the financial crisis of 2008. If you remember this period where the market fell from this 1600 level down to about 700. It took about a year and a half to get there. And that was the pits of the recession. That was the worst recession we've had since the Great Depression and the worst little bear market. But it looks like a blip when compared to what we're seeing right now. And that, again, is the benefit of the bigger picture, just putting us in context of our investment plans or things that go above our short-term trades. That was as bad as it got. And then the QE1, QE2, QE3, twist, and et cetera, has helped us, the tax cuts, the recovery, all other components has pushed the index where it is now, which is pushing above 2,800, pushing above the peak at that January 2018 craziness, straight up market there. Pretty much all of 2017 was straight up, similarly to 2013 and to an extent 2014 in terms of being straight up, even 2009. So are we getting 2019 being a straight up year? Probably not. But putting it in context of these other sessions or other events, well, I guess it's not out of the ordinary. And that's what we'll focus on as we jump down now to a weekly chart. This is the S&P 500 on a weekly basis. And this again takes us to 2015, which is roughly the last time we had a consolidation or chop or rectangle that took place between, I know it's crazy to say right now, 1900 and 2100, because now we're talking about a bigger rectangle between about 2600 and 2900. So those are key focal points to watch on this bigger picture. And right now, especially today and this week, potentially, we are seeing price move back toward this January 2018 high. And that is a full recovery after this melt up into the midpoint of 2018 and the crash into December, and now the recovery in 2019. So as we go through this week, the remainder of March, and of course into April, we will keep our focus on the levels that are just shy of 2,900. And if the market does push above 2875, we're talking the S&P index here, that leads us to a push or short squeeze all the way to 2950 and probably beyond it. What's the precedent for that? Again, 2017 for the bulk of 2016 and various other years that looked similar. And just taking this a little bit higher perspective, that is what we're looking at for 2013 and 14. So again, this bigger picture concept helps us with our planning. It isn't necessarily, what do I do the next day? That's a lot of times what our videos focus on. This just pulls our perspective up a little bit to the bigger picture. And that does indicate strength or trend, higher highs, higher lows, rising moving averages. And we do have our pullbacks in between those. The most recent deeper pullback was in a 2015 and a 2016, which also had roughly speaking, a January crash into a recovery. Now we have a November, December crash into a January recovery. So keep in mind 2016 and 2019, just in terms of the bigger picture. These levels would be similar on other 
indices in terms of the NASDAQ, Russell, and the Dow. Let's take a look at just key stocks before we go on. This is Apple. And again, we're looking at positions or looking at premium sold, premium bought, in out spreads, verticals, maybe even condors. But the bigger picture helps us make those determinations or decisions about where the market might be headed. And maybe importantly, in terms of selling premium, where it might not be headed. So in this bigger context of an uptrend, we can connect the dots and show, relatively speaking, rising parallel trend lines. Now I know this overshot to the upside in 2018, and that just overshot to the downside back to our lower bound of the trend line. Where is Apple right now? Apple is into the upper bound of its rising trend line and into the $200 per share level. With that in mind, we take a look at the daily chart one more time. This again is a round number resistance, price pivot point, and it's a key spot to watch for Apple shares going forward. If the market can break above 200, that would trigger, or I guess extend, our alternate thesis, breakout thesis, and that would be similar to July in 2018, when Apple shares went skyrocketing higher but then fell right back to earth. So right now we have a metric or a pivot or a focal point from the bigger picture at $200 per share in Apple. We're going to frame our trades based on what happens next into that spot. Bearish beneath, of course, bullish or avoidant turn to the next stock if we don't wanna play into a rising breakout market. Amazon shares are doing a little bit similar metric we can draw similar trend lines, but if, as we can see, uh, Amazon has exceeded its trend line channel from earlier years. That puts it in brand new territory, breakout territory, bull territory. And this is one of those stocks we've been watching in videos, trading in the lower frame to get a breakout. Remember from prior videos, we had a low average directional index. That means compression. That means consolidation which gives us a future breakout. So Amazon shares are engaging in that breakout. We've discussed it in terms of a low ADX scan, compression scan, and range expansion. That did favor premium purchases up above 1700, and we are now extending above the 1800 per share target. So 1800 per share will be the key focal point for Amazon, similar to about 200 in Apple and Google, we can see similar metrics with our, we'll just reconnect them here, our rising trend line channels. In Google, we can see similar metrics with our, we'll redraw them, rising parallel trend line channels. We have a low here, we're connect, connecting the lows, connecting the highs, and that is going to be similar to what we're seeing in Apple. Sure, Google prices overshot to the upside, pulled back in, overshot higher in 2018, rapidly pulled back in, but just like Apple and other names, Google rallied up away from this 1,000 per share pivot. That's a really good spot. Hindsight, of course, is 2020, but we need to take these principles into today in terms of pivots. That's a great spot to sell premium beneath any little duration play beneath that because the thought process is Google shares could hold and bounce. And if so, we want premium sold beneath these levels. We like that as opposed to just getting the stock because it did break a little bit under a thousand and then recovered. So this next pivot is into 1200. Google shares are above 1200 and may be heading in the future toward 1300. We are seeing a break at the moment above these rising trend lines. We'll take it back to the S&P to finish the video, but keep these bigger perspectives in mind because we don't take the time to look at them as much as maybe we need to or would be helpful to our trading decisions on the short-term frame. This is not intraday tactics. This is not an intraday video, but it's a swing trading, directional, bigger picture style look at these markets, some key stocks. And if you're looking at your own trades or your own stocks, many, many samples, take a look at the weekly charts and the monthly charts, just maybe even over the weekend, as you go through your analysis and pick candidates, look at what the bigger picture is and try to trade in the direction of that bigger picture 
and make specific note of key levels that we can see from the weekly chart that we can't really see on that daily chart or especially that five minute chart. As always, be careful and be safe. This is Corey Rosenblum with your Theo Nightly video for March 21st, 2019.